since it is now 30 minutes past the hour. Welcome everyone. My name is Charles Bristow from Illinois State University. I'm moderating this session. Um, just a, you're probably familiar with all this already, but just a little bit of housekeeping. This session is being recorded. You'll receive an email announcement once the recordings are available. If you have any questions or comments throughout the session, please type them into the chat area. Um, we do ask that you mute yourself if you're not speaking in order to avoid extraneous background noise. And today's print, uh, presenter is Wilma Hodges from Longsite. Wilma is the Director of Training and E-Learning Initiatives there. She has more than 20 years experience in faculty training, LMS admin, online pedagogy, instructional design, online course and program development, teaching, and technical writing. She holds a master's degree in technical writing from the University of Central Florida and an EDD in instructional technology and distance ed from Nova Southeastern University. Wilma has been involved with the Sakai project since 2009 and currently serves as the Sakai community coordinator. She also participates in a number of Sakai community groups, including the Sakai Documentation Working Group, Sakai Virtual Conference, a Perio Teaching and Learning Group, Sakai Marketing Group, and the OX Working Group. Is there anything you're not a part of, Wilma? Uh, she's also an Aperio Fellow and a member of the Sakai Project Management Committee. So without any further ado, Wilma, take it away. Thanks, Charles. And you've reminded me that I have to shorten my intro. <laughs> So, okay. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Um, we're doing uh, the lessons redesign and new Sakai UI update uh, this half hour or 20 minutes uh, as it is. And I did kind of a, a last minute switch on my topic um, to, to include some of the very recent stuff on the new UI. So um, hopefully those of you who haven't seen it yet will have an opportunity to, to see some of the, the latest stuff that we've been working on. So um, the Lessons Redesign project, um, you may have seen some prior presentations on this. Uh, we basically wanted to reimagine the lesson tool as more of a lightweight site builder and uh, really make it more user friendly, kind of a cleaner design with um, increased control over certain elements of design. We also needed to update the underlying code base because it's RSF, which is an older technology. Um, so there was the, the you know, issue of, of upgrading the underlying code, uh, which spurred some of the thought into redesigning the tool. So the focus areas for this project, um, we wanted to make it easier to reorder and rearrange content. Um, we wanted to give people more control, again, over the page layout and design without having to know a lot of coding. Uh, we wanted to incorporate the idea of versioning or soft delete, you know, undoing features. Um, and we also wanted to take advantage of the inline editing capabilities in CK Editor 5, which uh, has a host of different builds that really leverage a lot of inline editing and collaboration features, which would be a big um, user improvement uh, for the experience uh, authoring content. Um, we also wanted to incorporate the idea of templating, creating different templates to give people a starting point so they're not starting from a blank page and um, make it easier to uh, create certain types of pages because some of the design is done for you. Um, and the idea of uh, templating kind of leads into the idea of consolidating some of the other tools that are maybe older and need updating. Um, perhaps they could be incorporated as a template in lessons as opposed to an entirely new tool that has to be updated in a separate space. So um, I apologize. My dog has just seen somebody outside. Hang on one second. Okay, hopefully the delivery is done. Um, <laughs> um, so we also wanted to, again, address that technical debt. So our timeline here, uh, we started this actually a couple years ago in 2018. We did some focus groups, uh, did a concept doc and sought community feedback. And we actually started working on the design in 2019. Um, and uh, we added elements of CK Editor to the Sakai code base. So that was incorporated into core, although it's not um, 
threw out all tools yet, but we laid some of that groundwork. And um, in 2020, uh, we had some discussions about the road roadmap um, because there seemed to be an awful lot on it. And the lessons project is a pretty ambitious one and also a very important one because we know how central that tool is to um, the way people design their courses. So we, we wanted to make sure we did it right and gave it the appropriate attention. Um, so we decided to push it off to Sakai 22 because there were some other things that we wanted to get into the next release next year. Um, and then we could kind of take a little more time with the lessons project and to make sure that that it's done right. So after code freeze for um, for 21, then we're going to go back and revisit some of the work that we've already done to this point and pick up where we left off. But I will show you some of the mockups that we had created. We actually worked with a, a UX designer to help us um, visualize this. And um, this is what we're thinking of. And again, this isn't a, a mock-up. It's not the final iteration of it. Um, but we were thinking that it would be more of a, um, you know, inline editing feel that you would have sort of a, an index of pages on the left that you would be able to hover over and get to certain actions um, a little bit easier for moving things around, copying things, adding new things, and that you'd have sort of a panel on the right that would allow you to add elements and we broke these out into uh, layout elements design elements like um, you know colors and and uh, blocks and different seg segments on the page um, and then you would also have tool links like things to resources or other tools within sakai and then widgets was sort of our catch-all for anything that lives in lessons like the checklist in lessons or uh, an inline question in lessons um, and there may be additional widgets that we develop later that would fall into that area there was also the idea and I, I don't have a screenshot of it but that there would be a history tab which would work kind of like a, a, a wiki or in google docs where you can go back to the history and see um, the history of revisions and actually um, reinstate an earlier version if you wanted to retrieve something so there's the idea of building that in building in that safety net um, to be able to retrieve data we also wanted to have a sort of a template um, selection where you could apply a layout um, and obviously here we don't really have a lot of um, different ones to choose from but there, there would be kind of a template selector that you could choose from a variety and that these would be um, able to be developed by the institution if they wanted to save their own templates or um, you know add them individually even that possibly users could save their own pages as a template. Um, in terms of reorganizing, this was uh, a, a, what we thought of as a sort of a drag and drop interface for reorganizing pages and modules within lessons so that it would be a little bit easier to move things around. Um, currently, the reorder function is a bit clunky and people kind of have some difficulty understanding where to go to, to move things around on the page. So we thought that a separate reorganize area that um, also allowed you to access some things about um, different pages or modules, um, things like selective release and um, you know, making different criteria for conditional release um, would live in this uh, area of the organize space. Um, and then you'd have an area where you could um, import content, you could archive old content um, and have kind of a, a library of, of lessons that you've created that you might want to activate or copy or move in some fashion. So um, this is all I have for you at, at present with the lessons tool and I said we're, we're still working on this one. It's just sort of been paused um, until we start on development for Sakai 22. Um, but we are um, going to be doing, you know, additional, um, you know, focus groups and usability testing and, and yes, of course, we're going to, you know, keep in mind accessibility when in developing these concepts and, and testing um, any code that's contributed. But this is kind of where we are right now with, um, with the lessons work. So now I'm going to move into the second half of the, um, the presentation, Wilma? and that's about Wilma, yes. Before sorry, you go there's there's some questions in the chat. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, I thought um, you were going to interrupt me. <laughs> sorry, well, I I got slightly distracted. Um, no problem. 
uh, one big problem I have with lessons and consolidating with syllabus, and because I'm a big proponent of using lessons instead of the syllabus tool, except for two things, the collapsible sections in, set, in lessons are not accessible keyboard, and the page is not printable. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if those are being addressed early on. Yes, we definitely want to incorporate accessibility at every step of the process in redesigning the tool. And making a print view um, is extremely well, important because we know that students... The print view, yes, it has a print view, but you can't print it. What do you mean you can't print it? When I, when I go look at the print view and then try to go through, follow through the command and print off the page, it doesn't mm -hmm. work. Okay. Yes, we will address that. Again, this is early days for the, the revision of, of lessons, but, um, but we do want to have a functional print. Um, it doesn't make much sense to have a print option that doesn't work, so that's definitely something that we want to incorporate. Okay, uh, any other questions related to lessons before we move on? I want to make sure we have enough time to cover the, the new UI stuff. Will there be a way to edit the subpage links to make them buttons? I find the folder look confusing because it looks like it's pointing to resources folders. They may look slightly different in the new version of lessons, um, but there will be an option to choose the styling for those links. Okay. There's a couple other comments that kind of- uh, Yes, you will bit. still be able to use CSS if you want to, um, but we also want to build in some options for people to apply design uh, features to the page without having to know CSS. We're going to maintain as much of the functionality as we can of the current lessons, but it is, again, being rewritten in something other than what underlies the code now. So it's kind of a rebuilding of lessons. Um, so uh, we'll keep as much as we can. Some options may not make sense in the new version because the look and feel has changed. So um, we'll just kind of, you know, gain community feedback on, on changes we make as we make them. All right, can I move on? Any other? Yep. Okay. So the new Sakai UI. So those of you who were at the um, Sakai Virtual Conference last November may remember um, Michael Green's very compelling Sakai Garden presentation about freshening up the overall UI. And um, a lot of people were really excited about that. And folks that we showed those um, his preliminary mockups to after the fact um, got you know, we're very compelled by those images, really wanted to uh, capitalize on that concept. And, um, and so we formed this group, which is codenamed Project Trinity. Um, for those of you uh, who are in the know on the matrix analogies, that kind of follows in with the whole matrix thing. Um, but the goal is to refresh and modernize the overall UI. So um, the, the focus area is to project. Um, we started with Global Nav. So kind of um, the other portal elements that are present throughout Sakai. We also took a look at user dashboards and incorporating those and making useful information surfaced for users so that they can take action quickly and don't have to, you know, stumble around navigating through several layers to get to something to, that they want to make, you know, take an action on. Um, we're also going to be looking at some of the table views and the tab um, views throughout Sakai, things that exist in many, many tools, um, but are kind of old and a little bit stale and need to be modernized. Um, it'll make a big visual impact across the platform, um, and it's something that we hope that people will find more user-friendly. Um, and we're also kind of thinking about it with a sort of a mobile first philosophy. We want to make it very mobile friendly and, um, and able to be easily understood whether you're on a, a mobile phone, a tablet, or, or a desktop. We're also working on the design system, and this is kind of the next evolution of um, those of you may be familiar with um, the some of the projects to do an inventory of all the elements in Sakai. Um, this is kind of the next step of that is sort of, okay, we know where we are now, and here's what we want to outline as the guidelines for moving forward. So um, we've actually been working with some um, contract UX designers to help us through all of this and mapping all this out and, and creating these um, mock-ups. So what I'm going to be showing you next is some of what we've come up with. We've been doing focus groups on these um, and uh, some of you may have participated in a few of them. We'll be doing more. There's one more coming up next week and then um, we'll 
probably do some additional user testing and we'll have some surveys and things that go out to the community um, showing uh, different views and asking for people's preferences. So we definitely want to get a lot of input on this. But the input we've gotten thus far has been wonderful. We've actually managed to get some students to come to student focus groups and that's been really um, enlightening because it gives you a better insight into what students are looking for. And um, as you know, people who work more, more on the application, it's hard to get that direct um, input from students sometimes so that's that's great um, this has been our timeline so we started you know after the virtual conference after the Sakai and winners were announced um, we formed a, a, a steering committee and then we brought in as I mentioned some contract UX designers um, we've had a little bit of a shift in designers because some of them came in for a certain amount of time then moved on to, to other full-time jobs um, but we do still have someone um, working with us now to um, to keep going on these um, these mock-ups and, and the design system. Um, we started some design sprints in April and June and we did our focus groups as I said and then we're going to be again coding these elements um, in the next few months um, in time for the code freeze at the end of the summer so um, we're shooting for August to get the bulk of the changes in because we want this to be in 21. This is going to be kind of the big reveal, the big story for 21 is the new UI. So here are some images um, of what we have so far. So this would be kind of the landing page when you enter the system, you're logged in. This would be sort of like my workspace home area. Um, but this is the user dashboard and we've put in these course tiles here where you've got um, instructors would have the ability to, to put an image in there um, to kind of identify their course or they could choose from a library of images provided to map to certain courses. We've got these these um, various widgets which um, again surface actionable information for people they can see if they have pending submissions to grade or maybe deadlines coming up um, and we've moved some of the, um, the items up here into the masthead at the top and then we have this panel over here on the side that's currently collapsed but if you open it up you get some additional um, information here you got some tools that are specific to you but they're sort of the cross course tools um, like your calendar would be your calendar across all courses we're also thinking about maybe incorporating other things like that like maybe a collective inbox across courses or maybe a collective grades across courses um, You've got a task list, which is sort of like a, a to-do list um, that we're working on now. And that's the, the latest thing we've been focusing on in the focus groups is to see what kinds of things are useful to people in a task list and how they would want to manage those tasks to make them um, most effective for users to navigate through. So each of these would be an upcoming item maybe based off of calendar entries um, but that you could navigate directly to the item by clicking here instead of having to go through the course to a tool to the item um, so we're trying to make it easier for people to get to the, where they need to be and do what they want to get done to click into a course um, then you would get the course specific tools and again this uh, side navigation is collapsible at any time if you want more screen real estate you can just make that go away um, but when you expand it out you get um, your list of courses with um, visual indicators if there are new items in a particular tool that you need to access and again some um, kind of summary uh, alerts if you have um, things that are coming up that need to be read or um, completed or submitted um, and then you'd have course specific widgets similar to the ones that are on the dashboard and I didn't mention but on the dashboard we meant for that dashboard to be user customizable so you could choose which widgets you want to see and where you want to see them you can move them around on the screen put drag and drop wherever you want to see them so there would be a similar um, look here for the instructor to choose which widgets that they would want for the default and students could also customize it based on their view um, and then let's see if i have one more yeah if you can also navigate back to your list of work sites here if you wanted to quickly switch into a different course um, without kind of leaving this page you could just switch over to this tab to um, to see your list of courses and switch into a different course um, and 
you could also, I, I forgot to mention this on the, on the dashboard, um, we're incorporating the idea of allowing people to have nicknames for courses so that they can uh, name courses in ways that make sense to them as a user. It would retain the um, original, you know, course title and description, but users would have an option to nickname a course if they wanted to um, shorten it or make it more identifiable in their class list. And this is a view, very early view of one of the table views um, that we're still working on. And again, this is super early. Um, so we're still refining what that table view is going to look like. But what we're trying to do is maybe move away from the tabs and <clears throat> incorporate those tab elements in other places um, so that it kind of cleans up the interface. And then also make this uh, table um, more clean and modern looking and easier to manage for end users. Um, so I believe that is all of my slides. So I think I might have a couple minutes left in my overtime. No? Okay, so any questions? 10 minutes, Wilma. Ah, good. I was worried I wouldn't have time at the end. I see lots of questions going by, but I don't know which ones are actually. Josh right. has actually answered a bunch of the questions okay. in the chat already. He's been a very good. Awesome. Thank um, you, Josh. <laughs> and we also have Adrian and Earl here on the call. I don't know if you guys want to talk a little bit about the technical aspects of this. I know we were going to be um, putting some stuff into a uh, storybook. Um, and I can actually, while, while they're talking, I can show you um, some of the stuff in Zeppelin. Uh, this is parts of the design system um, that we're working on. So it's kind of an inventory of the different patterns, um, the color palettes. Obviously, this would be for out of the box Sakai individual institutions would have their own typography. So all of this stuff is being thought out so that we have kind of a, a nice framework to build from so that um, there's consistency across the system when people create new tools or modify existing tools with new features. Um, that's our grid system. This is a little bit more about the dashboard. Does anyone have any comments, Adrian, Earl? I'm just kind of previewing some of this stuff for you. I'm not going to try to explain everything because we can't do that in 10 minutes. Yeah, hi, hi Wilma. Um, so I'm, I'm Adrian, Adrian Fish from Longside. I work with, I work with Wilma. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the kind of work we're doing, um, um, you know, alongside the design, we're using, using um, tool called storybook so you can storybook's a great tool um where you can iteratively work on components and and the changes get reflected straight away um onto the screen and you can you can have various um various tools like um you know you can apply style sheets to your components and you can you can have an accessibility checker in storybook and storybook's storybook's a really, really great tool so adopting storybook's changing changing the way that um, we've worked on web components in the past with Sakai. I mean, you usually, I mean, I used to work on components directly in our Tomcat installation, right? So I can see them working in Sakai immediately. So it's changing the way I look at developing these things. Um, so yeah, so we're using web components. We're, we're going to try and we're going to get a web, we're going to get a storybook server set up on nightly so that um, every time there's a nightly build, uh, we'll we'll build we'll refresh storybook on there as well so people will be able to go onto the nightly server and check out the kind of like um the design system right the kind of stuff that wilma's showing you there right all those all the kind of mock-ups and stuff like that um that uh, our designer um our ex-designer bridget uh, created that's the kind of view you'll see hopefully in storybook right but everything will be kind of clickable as well there will be some uh mocked up data in there so it'll all be more kind of interactive. So yeah, that's that's, that's kind of so yeah, the whole thing's going to be web components, right? So um, so we're using a we're using a framework called, a tool called uh, Lit Element, um, 
which is a really nice lightweight way of creating web components. You know, mainly you're leveraging uh, W3C specs, right? Web component spec. We had just a little bit of uh, syntactic sugar um, from the element library. And it's so, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice way of developing. And we've, we've got a few other people in the community have already done some work on some of our existing components. For instance, uh, we have a web component, which is the permissions web component, right? So that's being used by quite a few tools across the Sakai code base now, right? So EDF, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know if you know EDF, but it's a company that alongside kind of partner with quite a bit. They're doing, um, they're basically, um, you know, replacing the current permissions helper across a lot of Sakai tools with one of the web components, right? So there's a few people who are dipping their toes in the water um, with it, with kind of like, you know, componentizing the front end of Sakai. So. It's nice. The trajectory is nice. It's not too steep. It's all right. I like it. So, yeah. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. I appreciate you jumping in, putting me on the spot there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no problem. You're all right. <laughs> Any questions well, no, or comments <clears throat> from anyone well, else? One question that, that went by early on was a, a question about um, how people could join the focus groups going forward? I um, I have a link. I don't have it in front of me. I will, I will get it and I will post it in the um, discussion forum where you can go to sign up. There's only one more this month and then we're going to kind of take a break from them. So there's one coming up next Friday. Um, I'm not sure how many spots are still open, but I will paste that link in the discussion forum for this session if you'd like to go and register for that. And there will be additional opportunities later. Um, one thing that we definitely want to do once we get Get some more functional mock-ups that you can actually click through. We want to do some focused user testing and that would be kind of a one-on-one -on -one user testing scenario. So we'll have additional opportunities like that um, and I'll be posting announcements to the discussion uh, listservs to let people know when those are coming up and when they can register. But um, oh good, thank you. My assistant Josh <laughs> has placed the, the links there for me in the chat um, for the instructor and the student one. Um, and so if you would like to sign up for either of those or if you have students that you would like to um, urge to sign up for the student one, feel free to register for those. Those are coming up next Friday. All righty. And right. we end three minutes, or you get an extra yeah. three minutes before the next session. I almost said before lunch, but it's not lunchtime yet. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for attending. And um, I hope to see you at some of those focus groups. Have a great day. Thank you.